discussing the four principles of being fully engaged here at TCAT. During this last session, we're going to talk about inviting a friend to church. In other words, we're going to talk about evangelism. This is a key aspect to being fully engaged with the church. Now, the word evangelism has a negative connotation for many people, but that's because we have a lot of bad ideas about what evangelism is and how we're supposed to do it. Because we create churches that unchurched people love to attend, we can partner with you as you invest in friends, and when the time is right, invite them to the appropriate environment. Most of the time, that environment is a Sunday service, but it could also be a holiday service or a special event. No matter what the event, inviting a friend to church matters. Drew Oakley will explain that more in this message. You have the ability, you have the capacity to change everything for someone by inviting them to be a part of what's happening in the church. Uh, you, no matter, regardless of your, your um, economic status, regardless of your education status, regardless of how well you think you know theology or don't know theology, how well you know your Bible or not, you have the ability to change everything for someone through just a simple invitation. That's exactly how it happened for me, and, and um, if it hadn't been for people who didn't give up on me in my time from straying from the church, I may not be standing here today. I was a person who grew up in the church. Uh, I spent most of my life you know, as a kid all the way to 18 showing up every Sunday and every Wednesday, but when, when I felt kind of a tension in my life between me and God, I decided to run from it, and I spent years running from it. If someone hadn't stayed on me and invited me and not given up on me and finally said, come sit with me, I may not actually be standing here today. And the unique thing about my story in the middle of that is it's not just my story, it's your story too. If you're listening to the sound of my voice in the middle of this, at one time or another, somebody somehow, some way, gave you space and opportunity to connect in a church. And what we're doing here at TCAT, what we've decided to do is actually built on the idea that that is the number one thing we should try to accomplish. Now, the reason for that is kind of multifaceted, but for me, just personally, the reason comes from experience. Fifteen years ago, uh, I began kind of a career as a denominational pastor uh, and was moved around to several different churches. I had a great opportunity to serve within 15 years in some really great communities, but all of them had something in common, particularly in my last church that I was serving in before I came here. All of them had something in common. They were church for church people. They were church for church people. Now, now hear me out. Let me finish what I'm saying. What I mean is, if you were a church person, you know, the churches that I served in ended up being some of the best churches in the community for church people. But for unchurched people, for people who didn't really fully understand, you know, church life or hadn't grown up in the church or been on the fringes of it, they would show up and it would be very weird for them. It would be very, very weird for them. No matter how much we talked about, you know, the, the theological term of evangelism or how much we talked about the importance of connecting, if, if unchurched people came, it was weird for them. There was all this stuff. There were all these things that we had to do. And I know particularly at my last, the last five years I spent before I had the opportunity to come here, I found myself um, kind of struggling with this reality that we would built this place that was probably the best church in that region of the state for church people. But whenever time I would invite one of my friends who didn't really grow up in the church, they would find it weird. They would find it uncomfortable. They would, they would find something that just made them kind of feel off or that they didn't understand what was happening and it just drove me crazy. And the staff of the church, we would get together and talk about it as a staff. And the truth is, it was perfectly designed. It was perfectly designed for the results we were getting. It was perfectly designed for the results we were getting. Um, what we were ending up with was uh, continuing to build a community of people who had always been in the church, and the church had been for them, and it would be for their families and their families. But we had this really big wall that we were unintentionally building between us and our community, and we just couldn't figure out why. And so when I had the opportunity, uh, honestly, what happened for me was about two years ago, I, I read a book by Andy Stanley called Deep and Wide, and it literally wrecked me for that kind of ministry. I just said, well, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I feel like in my heart that they got to call me to create a community and create a space where, where it, you know, we could create a church that unchurched people loved to attend. Not a church for unchurched people, but a church that unchurched people would love to attend. In other words, I, I just felt called and compelled to try to build a community for starters and seekers and returners. Starters, seekers, and returners. And, and the reason was because I, I had so many people in my friend's life, and you do too, so many people in your life who 
are, are either been hurt by church or have never gone to church before. And you know how much they need the gospel. You know how much they need Jesus. You know how much they need connection um, and community and relational growth and spiritual growth and all of those things. But, but there really wasn't a place for them. And especially in the churches that I had pastored for 15 years and the communities that I had helped foster, as much as I loved them and as much as I think they were the best church for church people in the community, I just realized that we weren't building community for unchurched people. That, that is, if we wanted to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus, which is the mission we've created for ourselves here, if we wanted to do that, we had to do something different. And so, you know, a year and a half ago, uh, when, I, when I got here to TCAT, we just set out together as elders, as the elders of our church and the leaders, the staff of this church, and um, to, to just say what it would look like to create environments, what would it look like for us to create environments that unchurched people love to attend, that create environments that kind of, kind of move all the stuff away that might hinder them, you know, the, the traditional language, the, the, the misunderstandings about how church life was supposed to work, or anything, literally anything in our environments that we could kind of step to the side so that all they would hear would be the, the good news of Jesus. How could, how could we make sure that we were creating space for people who'd never been to church before to understand why they needed it. And not just to show it, look, here's the thing, we, we wanted to create environments for kids. That when they're kids, the kids would literally beg to come back and hear more of the story of Jesus, right? That's, that's really why we wanted to do what we wanted to do. It wasn't, it wasn't so we could be unique. It wasn't so that we could be, you know, fancier than everybody else. It was how can we create an environment? How can we create an environment where kids love to come and hear the stories of the gospel. Now, that was the whole point of how we came up with what we decided to do here. That's the whole point of partnering with parents and everything we've tried to do for this past few months. But it wasn't just for kids either. It was for students as well. How can we create environments for students where students will walk out of here owning their faith, that we will strip away all of the, the, the assumptions and strip away all the barriers between them and a relationship with Jesus and give them and present to them an environment that they love to attend, that they love to invite their friends to. And the same thing for Sunday morning. What can we do to just step back and say, how can we make Sunday morning as accessible as possible for everybody? How can we have people walk out the doors going, man, that was helpful, rather than, oh my gosh, I've never heard that in 25 years of church, not, not because fancy or smarter than everybody else, but that we would do something practical, that the people who stood on stage and the people who talked to the group of people that would gather on Sunday morning would speak in such a way that they understood that somewhere in the room was someone who was probably a starter, a seeker, or a returner. Now, there's kind of a scripture that really has inspired this um, in us as staff. I've got it hanging in my office. Um, we've talked about this with the elders, and, and really our leadership team has kind of understood this verse to be kind of central to what we've been trying to do, and it's found in the book of Acts. And it just simply goes like this. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Now, this statement, this brilliant little statement was actually said by the brother of Jesus, James, the brother of Jesus, who was kind of residing over the church in Jerusalem at the time. And this, this argument had arose and about, you know, do you need to become a Jew first or is Christianity kind of its own thing? Or, you know, so, so should there be a pathway through traditions and, and a certain way to kind of enter into this next? And so they were sorting out, what does it look like to follow Jesus? How do we do this? What are the rules? And James, the brother of Jesus, after the argument had kind of ensued, so this is a debate going on, he stands up in the room, right? And like a hush falls over the crowd. And he says, look, I think we shouldn't make it difficult for those who are turning to God. And so we just, as a leadership staff here and in the culture we're trying to create, we said, how can we not make it difficult? How can we not make it difficult for people to want to see the church? How can we not make it difficult? How can we create an environment? And here's the thing. This is what's, this is what's amazing. And in, in order for us to continue to be who we want to be, it's 110% dependent upon you. Because we wanted to create an environment where you would have no hesitations whatsoever to invite your unchurched friends to attend this church or invite your hurt friends or invite your seekers, your starters, all of those people who are on the fringes, on the outside of church, that you wouldn't feel uncomfortable inviting them to come to one of our environments because we built it with them in mind. Not church just for unchurched people, but church that unchurched people love to attend. And here's why this is so important. For some of you that are listening to the sound of my voice, some of you, once upon a time, you were unchurched. 
Once upon a time, you were unchurched. I've heard so many stories in the past year from people who goes, I, you know, I thought I would never go to church, or I thought I'd never go to church again. And then I came and I found this place because somebody invited me, and I, they, just kept, you know, they just kept hounding me about it, and I finally said yes, and I showed up, and now I, I, I just can't believe that I missed this. I can't imagine not having TCAT as this community and this family in my life. I've heard that story dozens of times recently because of people like you. Um, and, and maybe you listen to the sound of my voice, that's you. That, that there was a time in your life where, where the church was the last place you thought to go, the last place you thought to go to try to find help, right? You were once upon a time unchurched. And that means that you understand the power of invitation. You understand the power of invitation. But for Others of us, you're more like me. You grew up in the church. You've always been here, right? You've always been around the church. Maybe even this is the only church you've ever attended or, or, or perhaps, you know, in the 25-year span of this church, you came from another church and you just kind of planted in here and that's okay, that's awesome. But here's the thing, you don't understand the power of invitation like someone else might. You don't understand how life-changing just a simple will you come sit with me can be for someone because you haven't experienced it. And one of the things, and this is kind of a long statement, but one of the things that kind of summarizes this for me that I really want you to understand, because again, I'm in that same boat. I grew up in the church, so it's not that same thing for me, is this. Until you've seen us, until you've seen us through the eyes and heard us through the ears of a seeker, starter, or returner, in, in, until you've seen us through the eyes or heard us through the ears of a seeker, starter, or returner, you haven't seen and you haven't heard. And here's what I mean. I, I talked to someone very recently who had invited their, their unchurched, pers- unchurched friend for the first time to come to our church. And, you know, they're walking in the door and, and all of a sudden you're like, you're just hoping and praying that I get the sermon right that day, right? And that the music is not too long and it's not too short, it's just right. And you're just praying that they play your favorite song, that one song that's so special to you. You're praying the kids' check-in line isn't super long and that the kids have an amazing time. You're praying that the story is just on point and the person who's sharing over there, the story leader and kids today is just perfect you're praying there might be a baptism like a good baptism not one where people don't understand the story and everything all of a sudden everything you're thinking about everything through the eyes of someone who's never been to church before and I love hearing those stories like I said I, I here's the other thing um you know in church we get a lot of critiques and we get a lot of complaints and we got you know emails about things all the time but you inviters you critique and you complain correctly and I love it I do. I really love it. I, I, I don't get a ton of complaints, okay? But, but the ones that I get that really matter to me are the ones that go, listen, I invited my own church friend this weekend, and, you know, I, we were trying to get into the door, and I just feel like there might be something we could do differently with X, Y, and Z. And I love those. And the staff, we, we surround ourselves with those. Now, look, we church people um, don't think that way sometimes. If we're, not, if we're not on mission, we don't understand this idea of how this can change everything for someone. We miss that. We miss that, you know, this is created. This place was not just created for church people. It was created for people to hear the good news of Jesus. At one time or another, you heard the story for the very first time. And it became a live and living, breathing thing for you. And we're trying to create a place that everybody, even if they've never heard it before, can find that story and it can come alive for them. And I love it. I love it when inviters come and say, I've got an idea of how we might be able to do something different. Because they've seen it and they've heard it through the eyes and the ears of someone whose life is being changed. And listen, you have the capacity, every single one of you have the capacity to change someone's life just by inviting them. Inviting friends to church is a way of helping to lead those outside the faith into a relationship with Jesus. Relationship is the key word there because people aren't projects. So as you consider inviting a friend, think about your approach. Be genuine. Pray for the other person. Listen to his or her perspective. Because choosing to hear about a person helps you value that person's unique story. Be patient. Don't expect the other person to adhere to your timeline. And invite them when the time is right. Now you and your group will talk more about inviting a friend and your leader will take it from here.